Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 302 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Is today's episode thumbnail distasteful? <laughs> is, uh, is it, you've seen it? Is it, is it distasteful? Is that, no. uh, I mean, we're recording this on a Thursday. They have 12 uh, hours of air left. They've got 12 hours of air left. So by the time you're listening to this, they've had negative uh, 50 hours of air left <laughs> or they've been found miraculously. Uh, and I think uh, whatever's happening today when you're listening to this is, is the deciding factor on whether or not <laughs> today's thumbnail is distasteful. <laughs> Or not, because today's thumbnail is me in a submarine in a deep sea diver suit. Uh, and as small as that thumbnail is, it seems a lot fucking bigger than the submarine they sent a bunch of billionaires down. Can we do that more often? Huh. Just send a bunch of billionaires to like the depths of the ocean and trick them into thinking that it's safe. Here's the thing. <laughs> if you spend $250,000 on an experience... It probably should end in death, you know? <laughs> like, like, what are you spending? What experience, like a thing that you do for a, 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 a couple of hours is worth a quarter of a million dollars where you don't get to come? Going to space. Really? Yeah. Going to space is worth a... You, if you had millions, you would spend a quarter mil on just going up there? Yeah. For a look? It'd be cool. You don't get to, you know, I would maybe do moon landing if there were a colony there. Like, but if I just get to go up, like, I can't imagine it's that different from a fucking plane trip. No, astronauts, like, describe it as they, they have, like, an ego death. They look down on the Earth. And yeah, they... but those are the ones that are in the satellite or, like, on the moon. No, these, like, we're, we're, like the Blue Origin... You. Oh no! Yeah, you're talking about uh, William Shatner. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're telling me that rich people had to spend a quarter million dollars to go up into space to realize that other people are human too? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh wow! Well, maybe we should be nice to each other. Oh, I'm so glad I spent a quarter mil and went into fucking space to realize <laughs> I probably shouldn't let my companies use, use child labor. In that, in that. Uh, and like in that one where William Shatner went, yeah. uh, he went with Bezos and someone else and yeah. they didn't experience that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only yeah. he did. Yeah, William Shatner's up there crying going, oh my God, borders aren't real and <laughs> countries aren't real and war is senseless and Bezos is like, look how many people I could employ as slaves. <laughs> the whole world is mine. Like William Shatner's up there crying about the, the humanity of the whole thing and how beautiful life itself is and how lucky we are to have a planet that can even sustain life and jeff bezos is up there in 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 the in uh, looking out the window with his finger like trying to pretend to crush the earth with his fingers <laughs> going look i'm killing everyone that's the difference yeah yeah i think i i don't know man here's the thing don't be the first thousand people to do anything <laughs> that's the lesson you got to take away from this don't ever ever do anything unless you've seen at least a thousand people come home you don't do that like you don't be the first person to get breast implants you don't be the first person to try the new uh the new uh fucking thing that will cure your depression the lobotomy like you let a thousand people go in ahead of you and you see how they come out of that and then you go maybe i'll go you know this is so evident because this is so evident gazelles know how to do this when they're about to cross the fucking river they all stand there going you go no no you go no you go and then one of them goes oh you guys are cowards i'll go and then it gets eaten by six crocodiles and then you go <laughs> how many expeditions has this submarine done three i haven't seen more than like three i think he's been they've been doing it for years have they one a year for years right three years <laughs> <laughs> i think like maybe five yeah, it's not enough. Yeah, and it's, in one of the exhibi expeditions, they lost it for five minutes. Yeah, I saw, I saw the a, a, I saw a piece that a journalist did. Right, classic American journalism of like this guy's doing something that's really expensive, so he's cool. Mm. Look at this guy he's spending a lot of money. That's good, <laughs> right? And this uh, journalist David Pogue, you can go and watch his puff piece where he went down. 
uh, in the submarine and uh, it looked like a lot of fun. And it was a little bit silly. It was really crazy. Of like, oh, look how much money people are spending to do this crazy thing. And, oh, I had to sign a bunch of waivers that says I won't sue them if I die. That's, that's a bit scary, but it's all right because I'm in good hands. And then just a couple of days ago now, which is like, I think, a year after he went on his expedition, right? He goes, oh, by the way... Uh, they lost the submarine for five hours. Oh, right, yeah. It wasn't five minutes, it was five (laughs) hours. And then someone's like, uh, hey, hey, uh, what do you mean you got lost for five hours? And he goes, uh, oh, they lost the submarine for five hours and they they discussed adding a beacon while they had lost it. (laughs) Like, well, there's fucking, I don't know, four souls underneath the sea that, that, that they've lost. They're going, oh, we probably should have put a GPS on this thing. Let me chuck a fucking air tag down there with it next time, which obviously they, they didn't learn from. You know, it came back up after five hours. There's probably four billionaires in there hyperventilating. They're like, ah, she'll be right. We got him. It's all safe. And then someone goes, can you please elaborate? Uh, and he goes, uh, I wasn't on the sub when it was lost. I was on the ship at the surface in the control room. They could still send short texts to the sub. You see how they're fucking... Every, every single detail I find about this submarine, it seems more and more unsafe. It looks like they sent a giant Coke can full of rocks down to the bottom of the ocean. And they were like, oh, they'll probably come back up. <laughs> you can't open it from the inside. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's bolted shut from the outside, right? So chances are they surfaced like yesterday and they're just floating somewhere. They can't open it. They keep fucking spinning around. Because <laughs> every time they spin around, all the weight's on the bottom again and then they spin around and it's just <laughs> they're just spinning. Imagine the smell. Oh, They've got a toilet on board, but it doesn't flush. It doesn't go anywhere. So what they have is just a curtain and a bucket. $250,000 to shit in, a, in front of the worst people on earth, other billionaires who think it would be cool to go down and see where other rich people from hundreds of years ago died. <laughs> What's the longest you think you could hold it? Uh, my poos. Well, I'm definitely pooing before I get on. But you, you also, well, I suppose there's a toilet on the boat, right, before you get in. Mm. See, so you know me. I'm the type of person where if, if anything's about to start, I have to wee yeah. right now, yeah. right? If I'm, about to, if I'm about to task switch, I must wee, right? So, I'm, so as, we, as we get on, you know, as we're about to get on the ship, I've weed before we get on. Then I get on the ship and, and, I, and, uh, and, and just before we're about to take off, I'll do another wee. And then once we get out to uh, where we're about to drop the submarine, I'll do another wee. And then when it's time to suit up, I'll do a wee before I put the suit on. And then I'll get in the suit. And then just when it's about the time to get on the submarine, I'll get off it and do a wee and then I'll get back on. And then they'll <laughs> bolt me in. And then just before we're about to hit the water, I'll do a wee. Mm-hmm. And, and when we start to go under, I'll realize, ah, I forgot to do a poo. <laughs> so probably immediately mm. is, is, uh, is I'm doing that. But... Um, yeah, the, I, I imagine the smell of inside that submarine. Like it's got like what does caviar smell like after you poo it out? Can't be good, you know. A stress poo done by five people under there. It's not. It's not fun. Um, but this journalist, right? They go, oh, uh, so they lost the sub for five hours, and they're like, oh, maybe next time we should put a GPS on it. Uh, and then they go, he goes, uh, they could still send short texts to the sub, but they did not know where it was. It was quiet and very tense. See, that sounds like they could send texts, but they weren't getting them back, you know, which, which is not really communicating, is it? You know, if I send you a letter to your address that you don't live at anymore, <laughs> we're not chatting. Uh, and they go, here's this. Uh, they didn't know where it was. It was quiet and very tense. And they shut off the ship's internet to prevent us from tweeting about it. What? You neglected to leave that in your report, David, that you did? That came out days after? His whole puff piece was like, ah, oh, look at this zany billionaire creating a really safe and cool experience. I had a lot of fun. Doesn't mention when they lost a submarine for five hours and instead of, you know, trying to save them, they instead <laughs> tried to stop the journalists from talking about it. Really good stuff. 
It's just like complete lack of safety. Another one is, uh, another thing I saw is uh, a previous employee of this submarine business uh, was like, hey boss, uh, I've just noticed uh, in, the, in the designs here that uh, the windows that we're using, they're only rated for about 1,200 meters, but we're going to be going 4,000 meters down, so we should change them. And then the boss was like, great spot, man. Really appreciate that. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> fired him. And then when the guy went to whistleblowers, like safety regulators, like, hey, these guys are doing dangerous illegal stuff, they sued him. And they settled out of court and nothing happened. I assume they, ne they never changed the window. So, you know, chances are they're fucking just missed inside a crumpled can you know because that's what that's what happens i read uh if like even you know a tiny little air hole happens or a piece breaks off or it or it punctures or you crash into the wrong thing or the window caves in because it's not rated to the depth it just goes vroom, and then you're flat uh so that's probably best case scenario for them worst case for scenario uh they're eating each other right now when do you start eating each other because it, here's the thing, right? I'm a smart guy. If, uh, <laughs> if, if I'm down in a submarine, right, with a bunch of other billionaires, frail people, right, and the captain goes, oh, we've got 40 hours of oxygen left. I go, well, 40 hours for five people. That's like a hundred if it's just me and the captain, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it, as soon as the captain goes 40 hours, of air left, I start talking to the captain about his wife and kids and we start bonding, you know? Because <laughs> we need the captain, but we don't need the other passengers who uh, who died of panic, you know, when I get up there. Died of panic. Yeah, they were stressed so they couldn't take it anymore. Um, <laughs> so that's fun. Uh, but what I read was uh, another time it when it got stuck, it just got stuck on something, right? And uh, the submarine driver didn't speak any English. There were like four other people in there that, that knew they were stuck, but the guy couldn't communicate that I'm going to fix it or we're going to die or whatever. It was just silent while he just was like, or like you know that, that scene out of Austin Powers where he's trying to turn the car around in the narrow hallway, <laughs> forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards. They got free. They got out. But this whole thing is just like, Here's the thing about experiences. Not only do will I never do something if I, like I'll never be the first one or even 10,000 people. I'll never be the first 10,000 people into any new form of transport or new experience ever, right? But also I'll never do it until they add comfort. Yeah. That's another indicator of safety. In that submarine, there's no seats. If that submarine had seats, that's because they, they really nailed safety and then they were like, what about aesthetics? They didn't paint the submarine. There were no seats. There's no fucking light in there. There is a speaker though. I read something interesting about the speaker. Uh, they reckon through signals that, it, that were coming up back from the submarine uh, that the, the power was resetting in there, Right. Uh, or the system was resetting every every 30 minutes or so. And when the system reset, it starts the tour of the Titanic again. It's pre-programmed. <laughs> and so so this is what this is what these people have been have been listening to for for the last, you know, I don't know, 40 hours with their last 40 hours of, of oxygen in their in their two hundred and fifty thousand dollar can of beans is uh every half an hour the Celine Dion song from the Titanic starts playing. <laughs> At the start of their tour, oh my God. and and again and again, <laughs> what's the song? Is it Celine Dion? What's it's the Celine Titanic Dion. song? I don't know. I don't have my phone. It's not. It is Celine Dion. My, my love will go on. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful song. Once, yeah. You know. Yeah, I can't get my phone. I don't know it's fucking crazy. This, this is this is the thing where where I feel like you're. Your, I tweeted about this. I spoke to this uh, on the show. I've I've known I've known a guy who who was born into obscene wealth, like just endless money. He his fa his father was uh, was he basically invented the insurance industry in like Malaysia or something 
for oil tankers and cargo ships. So you would insure 10% of the ship to 10 different insurance companies because these ships were so big and were full of so much valuable cargo and oil that if they sunk, an insurance company, if it insured the entire boat, would just go bankrupt no matter how big it was. They didn't know insurance company had the money. So this guy invented this whole new way of insuring ships, which is basically insuring pieces of it to lots of companies, right? And, and you know, you would sign, he was telling me, you would sign like a 300 million to half a billion dollar insurance deal and you would get a percentage of that, right? So these, it just like, he was born into limitless wealth, un- endless, you could never spend it money. And uh, I met him because I worked with him because he just on a whim one day left all the money behind and he got a job uh, working sales for, for like, insurance for like workers so like just you know he'd be making maybe 100 probably more like 70 just a normal job and uh i worked with him for years and he was lovely and uh and i was like man it must be so cool to just have like unlimited money like that i was 18 19 at the time i was like that must be like so amazing and he goes i think he was like maybe almost 40 when i knew him and he goes man uh you People think that that's cool, but by the time I was 30, I had, I had done everything. Yeah. I'd done every single thing. I'd, I'd, I'd had every girl. I'd gone to every country. I'd gone every city. I'd owned every object I've ever wanted to own, every car. I'd, everything that I ever thought I would like to do that, maybe I've done all of them twice. And now I don't have anything to look forward to. I've done it all. And I didn't like earn it. I didn't overcome anything. I just, I was like, yeah, I get it. It's mine. I've got it. Uh, and I think that the, when, when people have like obscene wealth like that, they go one of two ways. And that is they go the, the healthy way, which is what my, my mate did, which was he just made his life small. And he's like, I'm going to let go of all of this fucking shit. And I'm going to just make my life small and think about my wife mm. and maybe start a family and, 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 you know, make it small, make it a bit more real, or you just completely hold on to that fear of what's the next thing I can do and what's the next thing I can buy. And, uh, and just like constantly running to that thing that you haven't experienced yet. And that's how you end up fucking shitting in a pot next to five other billionaires, just like you mm. under the sea. Of like, oh, I've, I've never, because one of the billionaires is, is, is a guy who does that shit. He 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 went up to space and yeah. He, what else has he done? He's he's gone to the deepest part of the ocean on the Mariana Trench, like twelve thousand feet. Yeah, yeah. So he's already done this, and he's like, I'm gonna go. To, I've never seen the Titanic. I'm gonna do this. Hang out with your wife or your kids. You know, one of the stepsons of the billionaires just posted on Twitter yesterday. Going, oh, I know a lot of people will be angry about me at me with about this, but I'm going to the Blink 182 concert <laughs> instead of worrying about my stepfather. And that's what happens when when you you're going down to the Titanic instead of spending time with your wife. <laughs> your stepson's like, fuck that guy. I'm gonna get. All, I'm gonna go to the teenage angst concert. <laughs> I'm 30. My stepfather's gonna die. I'm gonna go to the teenage angst concert. Because I'm because I'm not that I'm not that sad about it, you know. I would go to the Blink One Eighty Two concert. If if uh, if your mum was in the sub, no. Well, there you if go. My stepdad was in the sub. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what happens, man. Killing stepdad is a billionaire. <laughs> my stepdad is Uncle Whitey. Yeah, that's what ha- that's what happens, man. You know, you fucking, you, you get all this money and you go, I want experiences and you just fucking do all this shit. Now, you know, imagine dying, right? You've, you, you, you die a horrible death in fear. Mm. And, the, and then you go up and you go, oh, well, at least my family loved me. And then, and then you look down at your stepson and he's just fucking having a rage at the <laughs> Blink-182 concert, having the best fucking night of his life. <laughs> Hasn't thought about you once and you're like, ah, oh, shit. Can I go back to Earth and get all my money? <laughs> no, look, guys, the billionaires are good people. I feel bad for the nineteen-year-old. Yeah, that's fucked. There's, there's, that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, the the son of a billionaire 
has is just gone under there. But it would, uh, I don't know, from an experience point of view, even if it was safe, it sounds shit. Like how much can you actually see out of that window? You know, mm. it's got to be dark. And there's not much that remains of the Titanic anymore. Right. It's all rusted away. So yeah, it'd just be like it'd just be like metal beams, like bones of a ship that you could that you couldn't even get close enough to see mm. to have a good look at. You know, even if there was light. And the two parts are eight hundred meters away from each other. Like you know how it's split right. into two. So it would be boring. Yeah. But it would be very cool. And if I got the opportunity, I would definitely do that. You would. De- what about now? Yeah. You go down to the next one. Yeah, the next one. You're insane. No, I'm not. I'll go down when they've worked out how to put like a massage seat in there. Because then I go, well, they've they they know it's safe, you know. Because <laughs> that's 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 one thing about uh, America is they'll they'll risk people's lives like like it's nothing. But you know, if, if they they won't risk the profit margin. Yeah. So if they've got if they've got a couple seats and air con. You know, maybe like uh, one of those projector lights so they can make the inside of the submarine look like we're in space. Then I'll go down because I know that it's safe because while they will risk me and my wife's life, they wouldn't risk losing that equipment because that would cost them money. (laughs) Um, Yeah, really good stuff. Hope they're found. Look, (laughs) on a serious note, there is nothing funny about people dying in a submarine, but in terms of submarine death, this is as close as we're going to get, you know? Like, this is the funniest of submarine deaths. Mm. Not funny, but it's on top. I'm loving that it's getting much more news coverage than a ship with 500 people on it that just sunk recently. Oh, yeah, was that in Greece? Yeah, but they were poor, so... Yeah, they were that's, refugees. Yeah, they're poor refugees, so... Ugh, we didn't need them anyway, you know? <laughs> Yuck. We did, what, did the, what did the billionaire even do? I gotta Google it. One of, the, one of them was a, like a Pakistani representative, wasn't he? Uh, uh, yeah, Ambassador. Pakistan's richest man That's is going down. What did he have? Two dollars? Um, <laughs> hey, come on, dude. <laughs> Getting him confused with those people on the other boat. All right, that was a bit racist. Um, <laughs> what did the billionaires do on the submarine? I love Google. You don't have to fucking be specific at all. All right. Okay. Billionaires. And the Titanic. All right. Here we go. Um, a look at the five men aboard a submersible missing... Ah, oh, five dudes. So you can't even have, like, one last route. Oh, what? <laughs> it's on the cards. <laughs> but the, they, really, like, when there's when you're five, five people stuck in a tube, mm. all right, and you know you're going to die, your only options are to fuck or eat each other. Let's be real. You want to sit and hold hands? True. That is, yeah. Breathe slowly. Yeah. What do we have here? Um, all right. Oh, another another good thing about, uh, well, you know what's, uh, look, there's a silver lining in everything. At least the CEO of the company is going down there with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like no one else is going down there anymore because uh, because uh, he he's he lost his company and his sub. Um, Did you hear the thing that they got sued for fraud? Because the the, no? cu- the couple, I forgot about this, the couple booked it, it was like $10,000 deposit. I saw this. And then they tried three times, it didn't work, so yep. he just cancelled it and yep. never paid them back. Yes, yeah, so he's like, don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll take that half a million dollars and think about investing some of it into a GPS. <laughs> you know, we'll duct tape an air tag onto the side of the thing. Who cares? <laughs> you know, this this search operation consists of throwing a bunch of fucking iPhone six E's down there as a net <laughs> to cast a fucking network with the Apple air tags. <laughs> Send a bunch of Apple Watches down there. If they ping, we found them. Um, so obviously the the guy that runs the business, uh, he's down there. Um, uh, Hamish Harding, 58, British billionaire and chairman of Action Aviation. Uh, this is the guy that does all the adventures. British billionaire and avid adventurer Hamish Harding is among those missing as confirmed by a social media post, uh, which he was proud to be heading to the Titanic as a mission specialist. That's like me getting on the train and being called, calling myself like a transport specialist. 
What does he have to do with a mission? You're a, you're in there. Mm. You know, are you driving or planning it? No, you bought a ticket, cunt. When I get on a plane, am I a fucking aviation specialist or <laughs> or am I paying fucking ninety dollars for a for a seat on Tiger Airways? Um, all right. So how did he make his money? <laughs> Uh, Harding holds three Guinness World Records. So maybe we should rank these in order of sympathy <laughs> that I feel for these people. Harding holds three Guinness World Records, including the longest duration at full ocean depth by a crewed vessel. Uh, yeah, I mean, that he's got least sympathy for sure because he's already gone down to the bottom of the ocean and space. So he was like, he was bound to go. Like mm. that's that was always written in the stars for him. Um, all right. Who else do we have? Uh, Shazada Dawood, uh, the vice chairman of Pakistan based Engro Corporation. Engro. Jeez, that's going to be a hard word to read if you have dyslexia. E N G R O. <laughs> Don't want to get that one wrong. Um, <laughs> what's Engro the Corporation? <laughs> that is Engro. Corporation. Say that slowly, everyone listening at home. <laughs> uh, investments in fertilizers, vehicle manufacturing, energy, and digital technologies. Right. So it sounds like they make fucking missiles. Um, <laughs> and we've got, uh, uh, but but also his son. So most most sympathy for the son, uh, and then we're going to put least sympathy for for the the chronic adventurer. I don't know where we're going to put the Pakistani's richest man yet, uh, but we, we we should get our uh, tier list up here. Uh, Paul Henry, 77. Well, he's kind of of dying age, so I'm going to tentatively place him as, like, secondly sympathetic. French explorer and former commander of French Navy. Um, so never won a war in his life. Uh, also known as Mr. Titanic. <laughs> After retiring from the Navy, he led the first recovery expedition to the Titanic in 1987 and is a leading authority on the wreck site. Um, after laying eyes on the site of the wreck for the first time. Well, he's seen it again. Okay, so I think the real problem mm. here is clearly the fucking driver. Because it seems like this guy and the other billionaire have both done almost this exact same thing. Yeah. It's the other guy who's fucking got his submarine from Aldi that's the problem. What do I need a window for? I've got glad wrap. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. So I feel least sympathetic now for the driver. All right. And then we, because it's his fault. And then we're going to put uh, put Hamish the adventurer as second least sympathetic. Then we'll go the guy who's 70. Then we'll go Pakistani billionaire. And then and then I'm most sympathetic for the kid. Yeah. Horrible tragedy. Um, but who knows? Maybe they're good at holding their breath. Uh, I'm sure they'll be found. You know what? I've I've just thought of a new business idea. Three hundred thousand dollars, and we'll go and find the wreck of that submarine. That's a good, that's a good idea. Yeah, and and we'll just we'll just cut even more corners, right? <laughs> so, because because clearly it's obviously a viable business strategy to uh, build what appears to be a submarine, and then post videos of that online. And then just just go, look, this one's $300,000 because it's safer. Mm. You get a bunch of bookings, a bunch of deposits, and then you just fucking never do it. You keep all the money. <laughs> and then it. never actually go down under the sea. So that, that way karma has no opportunity to strike <sighs> you down for your sins. Um. <laughs> Great stuff, guys. I think I'm going to say that the the thumbnail was maybe not distasteful until I joked about it for 29 minutes. <laughs> and now it's become, like, abhorrent, this whole episode. Mm. Um, good on them. Um, what have I been doing? Uh, all right, to, to, to even this out, my life sucks at the moment. All I've been doing is scans. I've been scanning my fucking skull all, all week. I went in. Uh, I thought I was going to get a date for my surgery on fucking Monday. I was wrong. This health shit's so complicated to understand. I don't get what's going on. Cut my fucking head off already. I'm sick of it. I want my new chin. 
I thought I was getting scans and then to go to the orthodontist to look at the scans and then they would go, yes, you're ready or no, you're not. And if I was ready, I would get a date. Mm -hmm. It wasn't what's going to happen. I went off to get scans and they're weird scans. They're like uh, x-rays on my skull, right? So I'm getting fucking microwaved over here. I had to get like six of them done. So I can, I can feel <clears throat> my brain like expanding like the corpses of those people trapped in that submarine. <laughs> Too much. Um, uh, I had to go in, and it's because it's my it's my skull and my teeth and my chin and everything. It's uh, it's not an X ray machine that you think of. You go in and uh, and you just there's this thing like this microphone, and you have to fucking bite on it, and then this thing like spins around your head like Magneto's helmet, and uh, and and you forget pieces of your childhood uh, as as it scans. And, uh, and I don't like, I, what I don't like, right, lovely nurse there. She was good. Uh, and uh, I meet her and she goes, all right, step into the machine. I go, all right, all good. And then she steps behind 16 layers of bulletproof glass. <laughs> I don't like that. That, con that concerns me. If, uh, if I'm, you know, why is she behind the glass if this is safe? Okay. She, uh, and people go, oh, it's just because you don't want to get x-rayed all day. Well, I did. <laughs> that's what happened to me i got several x-rays all day so you know just a little bit concerning is all i'm saying so i do that one you bite on this thing and then this thing spins around but the fucking problem is i'm too tall for the fucking machine that's supposed to be at normal person's head height so it goes all the way up and it's not high enough and then it goes all the way down and it's not low enough. So she just had to put me in the fucking middle and then I'm just like hunched over trying to hold my skull in place, which is not how it works. So we had to do it a bunch of times. Uh, oh my God. And then we, we finished that and then and then she goes, all right, now you're gonna go into the, into the next one. And, and she puts fucking like electrodes in my ear and then another one on the top of my forehead, I guess to tell the machine where my skull is so it doesn't spin around and take my teeth out with it. And then that thing spins around me and I'm thinking, oh, well, at least that's done. And uh, joke's on me because then I had to go to the orthodontist and I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, they're going to look at the scans that I did and then they're going to go, oh, yes, you're ready or no, you need a few more weeks because we're just waiting for my teeth to be in position so that when they move my skull, I'll be able to close my mouth uh, at the end of it, right? Uh, that's what we're waiting for. And uh, then I get to the orthodontist and they go, all right, are you ready for, for, your more, for more scans? I go, what? I thought we were looking at scans. And she goes, no, we're, we're doing more. I'm like, okay. And she gets out this thing that's like a, it's, it's like a giant vibrator, right? But it has a camera on the end of it. And it's like she brushes your teeth with it. And, and it's taking photos like every, every few milliseconds. And uh, it builds a 3D model of your teeth. That's how I got the, the teeth that are on my shelf there made. That's a scan with that thing. Right? Yeah, pass that to me. Uh, this is my old mouth that they scanned for the people watching at home. And that's from a thing going all around my mouth and creating a 3D model of my teeth so that the surgeon can plan the surgery. And uh, she's doing that. And then that took ages, but I'm used to that. And that's, that's fine. It's just like rubbing a piece of plastic all around your, your teeth and your mouth and everything. But it takes ages. But I'm fine. And then she goes, all right, now I'm going to take some photos. I'm like, okay, cool. She gets me to smile. She takes her photos. I'm like, oh, great. We done. And she goes, now I need to take a photo of the roof of your mouth. And I'm thinking, oh, she's going to put a little camera in there. No. What she does is she gets what I can only describe as a, a reflective spatula. <laughs> and she sticks that thing so far down my throat that look at that. <laughs> Horrific. All right. She's getting me to do that. And I'm fucking deep throating this woman's spatula while she's taking photos of it with her camera, trying to get the right angle. But again, I'm too long for the chair. So my head's in the wrong position. So she's struggling. Mm. And then she gives me, then I'm like, all right, well, that was bad enough. And that felt enough like porn. But then she gives me forceps to hook to my cheek to go like this, <laughs> to pull my fucking mouth apart so that she can take photos of my, my teeth with my lips stretched apart. And then she gets me to do it the other way and now all i can think of is is just how catastrophic to to my my career it will be when those photos inevitably leak to the masses <laughs> and end up on strange fetish websites me deep throating spatulas and you know fucking pulling my lips apart like i'm some kind of strange <laughs> gynecology fetish video <laughs> 
I'm over it, man. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of scans. But I've, I was told then that now next Wednesday, they're going to look at those scans and the scans that I did. And then they're going to decide if I'm ready for the surgery. And if they say that I'm ready, how good's that? <laughs> You're probably thinking, good on you, Lewis. You're finally ready for the surgery. No more scans. Wrong! If the orthodontist thinks I'm ready for the surgery, then I get to book an appointment with the surgeon who looks at all those scans. And then if he thinks I'm ready for the surgery, then he books me in for a full fucking 3D modeling of my skull. And I do the big x-ray. And then I come out going, fuck, what's my favorite color? I can't remember. <laughs> I got to pick a new one. Come out there. She goes, oh, you know, my girl will be like, oh, how was the x-ray? And I'll just come out. Oh, it was uh, wonderful. <laughs> you have a French accent? Uh, oui. <laughs> I do not know where it's come from. It sounds kind of Russian. I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> but <laughs> what I'm saying is the end's in sight. It's almost over. I'm talking about the, the air supply in the submarine. Um, it's, almost, it's almost over. Um, and uh, I'll, finally get, I'll finally get cleared or not cleared on Wednesday, which is cool. I'm looking forward to it because all of this stuff has just been waiting. Right? Once I, the, all the meetings with the surgeon were super exciting. The orthodontist is the guy that does your braces, so it's just painful every time. Change a wire, move this, move that, put a bracket in, fucking pull on your teeth, yank on this, yank on that, all while you're healing from a surgery. Very painful. I cried several times at the dentist from pain. Meanwhile, some fucking nine-year-old is in the next office over, you know, giggling. <laughs> the nurse thinks I'm a wuss. I had surgery! Right? <laughs> but the surgeon, that, that one's exciting because that's like... Uh, booting up a new a new game on Skyrim and being like, what should my character look like? You know, playing with the sliders, adjusting the jawline slider, being like, oh, should I have a butt chin? He literally goes, I could give you a butt chin if you would like one. <laughs> I don't know if I like those. Or, but Henry Cavill's very handsome, but I don't think I'd ever look like him. Mm. I don't know, man. I, I, I just, I haven't, I don't, it's hard for me to think about because I don't know what he can do. Like it's, I don't know. He didn't want to tell me too much about the second surgery. Cause, cause I was asking about that when we were talking about the first one. So he was like, look, I don't want to, I don't want to confuse you. Right. Which was a great move because I remember uh, in my, in my meeting with him uh, uh, like three weeks after the first surgery like the recovery meeting to see how i'm going if i'm in pain he goes uh how how do you feel do you feel good like is there any pain and i said oh yeah i'm feeling good but i i just i i feel the screws that are that are here is that normal is that i feel very like um aware of the screws that are in my mouth uh, and he goes what screws and i go oh just because um you know when you did the cutting and then you screw it back together and he goes i didn't I didn't put any fuck. I didn't put any screws in you, and then and then and then I, that's when I found out that I had a completely different surgery to what I thought I was getting. <laughs> it was the one that I needed, thank God. But I think for a moment, the dude, you should have seen the the flash of fear on that surgeon's face when I was like, "Oh, I can feel the screws that you put in me," and he was like, uh, "Did I leave screws in this guy? Did I give this guy the wrong surgery? What the fuck?" <laughs> Did I leave a scalpel in there? Oh my God. Like, like he just, I just saw a million dollar lawsuit flash in front of his eyes. And then, and then, and then he was like, oh no, this guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> what were you feeling then? Just, just bone regrowing. So we did cut there. I was just oh. feeling bone regrowing weirdly. I don't feel that at all anymore, but the, I was thinking about the second surgery because they do screw you back together like this. Yes. yes. So, it, you know, it, man, it's just fucking mind of a matter stuff, dude. Like you think you've had something and then, and then your, your brain and your body goes, yeah, you've definitely got a screw in there. Um, and, and then, yeah, he was like, I didn't put a screw in you. And then like two days after that, I just was like, oh, there's no screw. <laughs> I didn't feel anything. Um, but yeah, the, it's, it's hard because the, the second one is, uh, I don't know the process very much of like the actual designing mm. my face bit because because it's collaborative like me and him do it together, but um, yeah I don't know he he I I know I used to do a joke about this like he can I I used to think that my after 
is pretty limited by my before. Like there's only so much change you could do. Not true at all. Mm. He can do anything. He's like, like he, he goes, oh, I can make you look like a chimpanzee if I want it. Like I can do anything. Uh, so, so now I'm like, fuck, what do I want to look like? But uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, what I'm hoping for is I, I hope he gives me three options, you know, like he's traditionally handsome. He is like, uh, like indie handsome, like indie movie handsome. And here's a silly one. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, then, you know, like my fucking chin's all fucked up. And then, <laughs> and then I just, you know, maybe he gives me three options and then I just leave it up to a vote. You know, who's the most handsome spears out of these three spears is, and then you guys can have a say. You know what would be really good is uh, if it's like a program like the Sims thing mm. is you know how there's, there's live streams where where um, they'll get chat on Twitch, the chat to play like Pokemon. Yes. We could do that. with We get chat to design my face and we go, you know, you, got, you guys have 30 days to, to play with the sliders yourself by donating and, that, and then whatever, the, whatever it is at the end of the 30 days, that's the face I get. You know, and we would do it on Twitch because uh, if we did it on Kick, they would they would they just give me blackface. You know, there's not not much moderation going on there. You should um, actually consider that because that might pay for both of your surgeries in full. Doing it, yeah, okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, you see, here's the thing: um, how much money am I raising in the in the in the charity show fundraiser if we if we do this? Because I'm not raising like cancer. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like they like I I know a comedian Nick Kappa, he had cancer, horrible, but great for a fundraiser. You know, he did like a comedy show, raised a bunch of money. He's cancer free now, but I don't think I'm, you know, oh, I need a new chin. You know, yeah. How like 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 my favorite entertainer has cancer. I'll spend a hundred bucks and I'll buy a t-shirt. My favorite entertainer, what's yeah, wants what. Uh, you know, appears to a lot of my fans to just want cosmetic surgery. Mm. Maybe I'll catch the next show. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, um, you'd have a lot of people donating thousands of dollars just to fuck with it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. That'll be good. They'll give me a new nose. Um, speaking of kick, this have you are you across this uh, hundred million dollar yes. deal that XQC signed? I am across it. I didn't know. I knew he was the biggest streamer, but I didn't know. I had no idea what the biggest streamer meant. You know what I mean? Like LeBron James is not signing hundred million dollar deals. He doesn't do that. But the biggest streamer is. You know. Yeah. Do you That's think he crazy. Actually, do you think he actually signed a hundred million dollars? Not cash. I reckon he would have got stock and ownership and yeah, and and like opportunities to make more. He would have had like a minimum. Like you get at least fifty, but if you fulfill these things, there'd be like streaming hours and stuff like that. There'd be I reckon it'd be like a maximum of a hundred million, and a lot of that will be stock and shit like that. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and because people are like, oh man, a hundred million dollars. How can they afford that? Kick new streaming service. It's owned by Stake which is uh, the biggest crypto gambling website in the world. Mm. So that is billions and billions and billions and billions of, of money with zero overhead. Yeah. They pay for servers and web hosting and programmers. Mm. That's, that's it, you know? Every other business has to cut costs everywhere to make a profit. Like this submarine business that I keep going back to, uh, there's a great clip online of him talking about how progressive his company is. And he goes, we don't want to hire 50 plus year old white dudes. We want to hire young people who are innovators and, and are excited. And, and that's uh, CEO talk for we want to pay people less money because 50 plus year old white dudes with lots of experience in engineering and, and, and fucking, I don't know, whatever you call driving a submarine, they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars because they should. <laughs> Whereas the 25 year old is like, Oh, maybe we use the cheap window. She'll be right. <laughs> He's only 80, you know, <laughs> but that, yeah, everyone's like, Oh, how can kick me? And, and true kick can't afford it. 
the streaming service, they can't afford it. The company that owns Kick absolutely can. And basically, the history of Kick is Twitch banned people using Steak on Twitch. And people, Steak was making millions of dollars from people streaming their gambling shit, right? Uh, because every dollar that I get paid from a gambling business, uh, my fans lose 100, <laughs> basically, is the business model. And uh, so Steak was like, oh, fuck, that actually hurt our business heaps. No worries, we're just going to create a giant streaming platform to compete with them, <clears throat> and now they're printing money. Uh, and uh, I think it's awesome for the industry. And uh, and I think it's, uh, I think it's, all these people going, oh, you know, like Pokimane, big lady streamer. She's a, a big reason why uh, that type of gambling was banned on Twitch at all because uh, of her voice against it. And I think she's right. I think that, that gambling on stream is just wrong. Um, I think that there's, I think the gambling industry is evil. I think if you do it personally and you don't have a problem, there's nothing wrong with it. That's what I think about it. But any, any industry that, uh, you know, thrives off addiction and things that ruin lives is, is not good. Uh, in my view. And people go, oh, well, all you have to do is not get addicted. Yeah, okay. Well, mm. I'm sure that I'm, I'm glad that that works for you, but it doesn't work for most because if that were true, there'd be no gambling industry. That's, you know, it thrives off problem gambling and people losing. It's a, it's just a, it's morally wrong, but, you know, whatever. Um, is it, because, you know, Pokemon, she came out and she said, I just, I just couldn't compromise my morals to take that much money to stream on a, a, on a site that's funded by gambling, crypto gambling, because it destroys lives. Is a website funded by gambling worse than a website funded by Amazon? I'd say what I was thinking. they're equally yeah. evil. I'd say they, they do probably do just as much harm to each other. Amazon probably edges it, actually based on the way they treat workers and, and just uh, the, probably the harm they do to the planet and uh, all of the shortcuts they take that just leave people, you know, worse off generally, the businesses they damage, all that kind of stuff. Like if you're talking uh, small businesses killed, uh, I reckon gambling is still winning, but Amazon's catching up real fast, you know, because gambling has been around for the, for the, the history of the world. Right, so they're absolutely winning in terms of small business casualties from like Jim the baker who getting addicted to slots to fucking, you know, Karen the tutor losing her life uh, in, in uh, Las Vegas, right? But Amazon's coming real fast. Every fucking mum and pop store, every bookstore, every single business that isn't Walmart or a conglomerate is getting eaten up by Amazon. And I reckon they're coming up, they're, they're going to win this by the end of humanity's death. Um, so yeah, I think it's like, you know, if you want to take the moral argument, you would just, I guess, stream on YouTube would be the lesser of the three evils, Yeah, you know? So I don't think that argument holds water, um, but you know, hundred million dollars to fucking play video games. Yeah. You take that for did, sure. Did you see what he did? He started streaming the dark Knight. Yeah. Immediately. I love that. He, he, he's like, that's so funny and so fucking stupid. He signs a $100 million deal and the first thing he does is stream one of the biggest movies owned by one of the biggest movie companies illegally in the world. And even the, the admins of Stake are in his chat going, can you please stop? And did you see what he did this morning? He was doing Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is really, really funny. But yes. but he, he personally could get sued for that. Yes. So like Kick will obviously get sued for that. Right, if they want to sue, but also it's not like he won't. They would sue both of them, mm. you know. Um, but I guess you can afford it. <laughs> you know, hundred million dollars stream your favorite movie, get sued for it, and go, ah, that's okay. I can afford that. Why not? Yeah, that's funny. What's really interesting about the deal, though, is it's non-exclusive. So Kick has given one hundred million dollars to take Twitch's biggest talent biggest draw but they're letting him stream on twitch which a lot of people are like oh why is this happening i think it's really smart um because i would imagine i'm theorizing but i would imagine they would go you can stream on twitch yes but you have to stream more on kick or you can only stream on twitch for an hour a day or, or they, i reckon there'd be like some kind of rule about about limiting what he can do on twitch uh and it's a it's a great idea because 
he used to do gambling streams all the time and they're really popular. So what he can do is he can jump on Twitch, start his day on Twitch. The guy streams for like fucking 12 hours a day all the time. Start his day on Twitch, do an hour there of really fun, good stuff. And then go, anyway, guys, I'm not allowed to do this on Twitch. I'll get banned. So I'm going to go and do it on Kick, where it's fucking awesome. There's hardly any rules. And every single time you subscribe to me, instead of giving half of it to Amazon and Twitch, 95% of it goes in my pocket. And your fans are stoked and 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 feel like they're participating in something naughty. And it's just more publicity as well of like, man, look at this guy who's streaming on Twitch. He got a hundred million for kick. This is good publicity. And then eventually when he stops going to Twitch, they'll they'll really see the difference and go, oh fuck, I miss my guy. I'm going over to kick. It's just like a slow transition type of thing. It's really interesting business move, but they also got uh, uh, Amaranth, this huge like only fans, like sexy streamer. And uh, she blew up by doing like hot tub streams and bikini shit and, and then Twitch clamped down on that. So she signs like a fucking, I assume, 20 to $50 million deal with Kick. And the first thing she does is jump in a shower with three other really hot chicks and just shower, you know? And uh, yeah, I think... Uh, I think it's, uh, I just think it's good for streaming in general to have more competition and good for creators in general to have like lots of different platforms to upload to. Because for the longest time, it was only YouTube uh, and Facebook was working, but you couldn't make money. YouTube was the only one where you could make money. You couldn't stream on there. And then there would be like different platforms that popped up, and but they would all die in like 18 months. But now there, there are like semi-viable other video options like Rumble Seams to be working. Uh, and there's another one. What's the other one? Where all the fucking alt-right dweebs are. I only know about Rumble. There's Rumble. There's another one that I'm, that I, that I am, uh, I think that one's actually kind of dying. Rumble kind of killed it. There was another one. I can't remember what it is, but, uh, now there's kick and I think kick will just stay alive as long as crypto gambling is an industry. And so, which, you know, that'll forever be a thing. Um, and uh, Twitch is fucked because YouTube is is really getting good at live streaming. Kick now is fucking awesome for creators because who doesn't want a 95-5 split? It's like all these streamers that were big on Twitch, they have huge audiences on YouTube. So kind of the only thing keeping them on off YouTube is, is the idea that I don't want to only be on one platform, mm. right? Uh, and the fear that I won't be able to move my huge audience over. Uh, which we've already seen like heaps of streamers prove to be not really an issue, yeah. you know, other than the mixer debacle. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, now Twitch is just fucked. Um, and all these people are going, oh, but, you know, Twitch, uh, Kick is uh, actually good for Amazon uh, and that's bad for Kick because Kick uses use Amazon web services to run their whole business. Mm. So Amazon could, you know, in be totally within their in their right to go, ah, we don't want you using our services because you're killing one of our businesses. Fuck off. Uh, but Twitch has never made money. Twitch has never made Amazon money. It's operating at a loss for Amazon. It's a fucking head fuck and a PR nightmare, and it's only seemingly getting worse and declining and slowing down while all these other competitors kill it. While Kick makes Amazon money because they pay for Amazon web services and mm. Amazon doesn't have to make a profit off kick. They just sell them the Amazon web services. So why destroy your biggest competitor when it's the one of out of both of them, the only one making you money, <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's super interesting to see all of this stuff happen in real time. And I think Twitch's worst biggest problem uh, you know, because losing big streamers and big talent, that's that's bad, but it's not like, that's not really that big of an issue. Like in the scheme of things, a guy that pulls in 100,000 live viewers a stream spread out across the entire website. If you lose 100,000 people, it doesn't matter. Yeah. What does matter is pretty much every single user really disliking Twitch and the culture of Twitch and how the website operates and how it communicates and even worse than that, every single creator, big to small, feels the same. Yes. 
I haven't talked to a single person who's who's like a Twitch person that's happy with the website. I haven't seen a single like Twitch like person that's like, yeah, Twitch is great right now and the decision they're, ma they're making are good for the community. It's like they're just getting worse and worse and worse and every decision they make is just really uh, pushing people who are on Twitch to, to really think about and start planning jumping ship. Like it's a leaking boat and everyone can see that. And that's the biggest problem that Twitch has. Not that they're not profitable, not that they're losing their big people, not that there's competition. It's just that there's a general dissatisfaction from their users and creators on the website that has been festering for like at least two years and is getting worse by the month. And, and that's, it's going to be that, it won't be that, oh, we failed type thing. It'll be that really slow death of people leaving. But worse than that, no one's starting on Twitch now. Yes. Like if you're like, you look at speed, you know, he like, he's fucking Gen Z or that guy is huge on And he started on YouTube. All of these people that are, that are starting their careers, they're not starting on Twitch. Uh, or at the very least, if they're on Twitch, they're only multi-streaming there. They're not going all in on that platform. People are going all in on YouTube, all in on Kick, all in on fucking TikTok. You know, people are making more money streaming on TikTok than they are on Twitch as in terms of new creators. Uh, yeah, it's uh, that's that's the that's like a almost an unsolvable problem. Is like you don't have to worry about XQC now. You have to worry about the next XQC never even starting on your platform. You know, it's like how with TikTok, right? All these people that that have blown up, they didn't blow up on YouTube. They blew up on TikTok. You know, that's a fucking problem. You need a website that encourages you to start because that's why Facebook died. Facebook's for old people. Why are there only old people on Facebook? Because young people stop creating accounts. Yeah. If everyone, as soon as they were old enough to have a phone, started a Facebook, Facebook would just be how it always was, where there was all age ranges on it. But now it's just millennials who created it when they were kids and and don't, and don't really use it anymore because there are better apps and millennials' parents yeah. who use Facebook only. And that's because they couldn't capture the youth. Uh, and that's why uh, I will be stopping this podcast and starting uh, a TikTok account where I just dance and do trends to attract the next generation of 14-year-old fans who will eventually turn into 18-year-old fans who will buy a T-shirt because that's all that you you are to me is, is a T-shirt sale if you listen to this. Um, and we're going to end that there on that note. Um, thank you for listening. Um, and uh, if you want to listen to the Patreon episode, it's up right now. Yes. Uh, it'll be in the link to that will be in the comments and the description. We're going to go and record it right now and it's up right now and you get early access to all the podcasts, a Discord and a giant backlog of Patreon exclusive episodes. Uh, I'm Lewis Spears. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday or in the next two minutes on Patreon. Hope you have a shit one. Bye.